During an eclipse in 1957, a priest sneakily enters a church with a newborn baby who has a unique mark on his left chest. The priest lays the crying baby on the altar before he starts praying. As soon as the priest finishes praying, he takes out a dagger and holds it up against the baby, referring to the baby as an evil seed. Just then, militia arrive at the church, ordering the priest to drop his weapon. The priest appeals to the militia, claiming that they do not understand what he is doing. The soldiers are left with no choice but to shoot the priest and rescue the baby afterwards. Thirty years later, after the incident, an undercover priest and exorcist who identifies himself as Father Merrick onboards a bus on an eerie-looking highway. He takes out a map and smokes a cigarette before arriving at a church. Merrick is welcomed by a monk named Prior Andrzej as he expresses his gratitude to Merrick for willingly joining them. Merrick looks around inside the church where he sees a number of priests. The prior explains to Merrick that the church is in fact a sanatorium, a place in which people under the influence of the devil are brought in to be healed. Additionally, the priests inside the sanctorium also refer to themselves as monks within a brotherhood and live together inside the facility. The prior introduces Merrick to Brother Dawid, who is known as the resident jack-of-all-trades in the sanatorium. The three of them meet inside an isolated storage area. Dawid offers Merrick rosary beads, but Merrick respectfully declines and insists that he has brought his own rosary. They orient Merrick with the standard procedures at the sanatorium as Dawid proceeds with inspecting Merrick's suitcase. Dawid confiscates Merrick's cigarettes before the prior leads Merrick to his quarters. There is no electricity or phones around the quarters, but the prior relieves Merrick that he will be comfortable during his stay. After his final reminders, the prior soon leaves and Merrick settles inside his room. When Merrick changes his clothes and reveals his chest, a familiar unusual scar shows which infers that he is the same infant from the shooting incident 30 years ago. He opens his suitcase and shows a hidden compartment containing a pistol, a flashlight, and other items that were not allowed inside the premises. Merrick also takes out a piece of paper before closing his suitcase, exposing a small newspaper article about a missing woman. The bell tolls right at the moment, calling all monks to gather in the dining area. The prior leads the prayer before the priests start eating their dinner. Merrick stares at the bowl of food, questioningly for its unusual taste and odor. He glances over the other priests, who seem to be eating just fine, and so he eats the strange-looking food. After dinner, Merrick continues his tour around the sanatorium. He comes across several different chambers containing other individuals who are said to be possessed. Inside one chamber, he stumbles upon a woman and a priest inside. Merrick stares at the woman briefly before he returns to his quarters. He then takes a shower. However, during the interval, Merrick does not notice that the crucifix in his room has subtly rumbled. The next day, the prior organizes an exorcism session in the sanatorium. Merrick enters a room full of lit candles along with the rest of the monks. Inside, he discovers that it was the woman he previously saw inside a chamber. She stares blankly at the ceiling while tied on a bed as the monks gather on the corner. Father Piotr, Prior Andrzej's second in command, and also his vice prior, prepares to record the exorcism from the other side of the room. Before they begin the ritual, Prior Andrzej relieves the woman, telling her that she will be healed through their help. Merrick witnesses how the exorcism is performed as the prior sprinkles the woman with holy water. The holy water makes the woman wince as the prior proceeds with the holy prayer. He continues the prayer in Latin, and the other monks follow his lead while the woman slowly moves around the bed. As the prayer intensifies, the woman wildly gets up from the bed and snarls against the prior. The bed shakes fiercely as she continues to wail, shuddering frantically. The prior holds a crucifix against the woman, but she screeches and the crucifix catches fire. After the exorcism, Merrick comes back to his quarters to wash his face. He stares in the mirror for a moment before it shatters in his touch, making him freeze in surprise. Shortly after, the door to his wardrobe mysteriously opens with a low, guttural growl. Merrick leaves his quarters and walks across the hallway of the facility. He discovers a mysterious door on the corner of the hallway and approaches it. Just when he is about to enter the mysterious room, Dawid appears before him. Dawid tells Merrick that he can't enter the room unless the prior invites him, so Merrick obediently leaves the door. 
During dinner time, the monks continue to eat the strange tasting food, but Merrick is unable to digest it. He throws up as soon as he returns to his room. Merrick feels an immediate ache coming from his jaw, making him pull out his tooth. When he looks at his tooth, it cracks open, revealing a buzzing fly. He frantically pants and checks his mouth in front of the cracked mirror. Later that night, Merrick comes back in front of the mysterious room. He pulls out a small pointed metal from the cross of his rosary and picks on the lock. The lock clicks open and he enters the room, which is revealed to be the prior's office. Merrick quietly looks into the shelves until he stumbles upon a small hole in the painting. He touches the painting and not long after the wall clatters, displaying a hidden room behind the painting. Merrick finds a small storage containing a number of cassette tapes and a television. He plays a tape showing the recorded video of a woman who was previously exorcised. He later leaves the prior's office and comes back to the room where the exorcism took place. Merrick lingers around the room where he finds a mechanism that controls the bed and a machine produces the wind inside. He also touches the crucifix that was used and discovers a lighter behind it that initiated its fire. Merrick comes to a realization that the exorcism he had witnessed earlier was staged. He returns to his quarters in confusion and picks up the crucifix on his wall, keeping it concealed inside a cabinet. The prior gathers the monks for another prayer meeting the following day. He calls Merrick in front of the platform to lead their penitential act. Merrick hesitantly steps in front and leads the prayer. The prior tells him to recite the prayer in Latin, and he haltingly obliges while reciting random Latin words. Prior Andrzej interrupts Merrick as he instructs Father Piotr to take over the penitential act instead. While eating their dinner, Merrick unexpectedly ingests strands of hair from another bowl of the strange-looking food. He automatically gags and coughs in the middle of his meal, rushing to spit out the food. When he returns to his quarters, he glances on his side only to find that the crucifix is hung back on his wall. Feeling a sense of danger and anxiety, Merrick then opens his suitcase and takes out the pistol before putting it in his pocket. He also burns the newspaper article about the missing woman. Merrick walks through the halls and lets out an exasperated sigh, unable to understand the strange occurrences inside the sanatorium. He forcefully pulls the chain gates to express his frustration before he catches sight of a few monks digging a grave with a casket outside the sanatorium. Merrick returns to the individual chambers to check on the possessed woman he saw earlier, but only finds the room to be empty. Father Piotr, the vice prior, appears behind Merrick and watches him in the chamber. He requests for his presence in the church while waiting for him in the confessional. They enter the confessional where the two talk in secret. Piotr warns Merrick that the other priests are watching his every step and that it would be dangerous for him to continue on exploring the sanatorium. Merrick reveals to him that he is not a priest nor an exorcist, but an officer of the citizens' militia who went undercover to investigate the missing woman in their area. It was through an anonymous tip that Merrick is sent in disguise to the sanatorium after learning that the missing woman were sent to the place. He further explains that the militia cannot run a normal investigation in the sanatorium because of the shooting incident with a priest 30 years ago. In response, Piotr reveals to Merrick that the possessions and exorcisms are indeed staged in order to get attention and budget from the Vatican. Piotr leaves Merrick with a last warning before leaving the confessional. Later, Merrick comes back to his room and looks around for any surveillance. He pushes aside a closet and finds a hole with dark liquid spilling out. Merrick touches the liquid and slowly puts his hand into the hole, discovering a peculiar device made with an eyeball and a small bone. Just then, he gags and ends up spitting dark liquid on his floor. He glances at the floor when a buzzing sound intensifies as more flies emerge from the dark liquid he vomited. Merrick watches the door for a moment until he turns back and finds a hallucination of his face being soaked by the unknown dark liquid. As the night deepens, he sneaks off to locate the exorcised woman. He goes out to the graveyard and digs through the grave earlier. However, Merrick discovers that the casket was empty. Just then, Father Dawid emerges behind him and covers his head with a cloth. When Merrick wakes up in his room, he realizes that he is tied to his bed. All his belongings, including his pistol, have been discovered by the monks. Dawid watches him while he struggles against the ropes before the prior enters the room with four portions of meat. 
The prior expresses his disappointment to Merrick for their failed collaboration before they proceed to force feed him with four portions of meat. Merrick gags and ends up losing consciousness during his meal. He wakes up later that night and notices that Dawid has dozed off. In an instant, he untangles himself from the ropes and takes the chance to escape. Dawid shortly wakes up and catches him in the act, leading the two to engage in a wrestle. After much struggle, Merrick throws Dawid to the ground and shoots him dead. Before leaving his quarters, Marek notices the bowls that were used earlier for his meat. He sets off in the kitchen to learn more about the strange tasting food being fed to them. Inside, he discovers a freezer which contains the disfigured bodies of the women he was looking for. Merrick soon figures out that he and the monks have been consuming the organs of the women all this time. He bumps against Piotr in the kitchen, who has come looking for him, and they both stare in shock at the sight. Merrick becomes even more determined to escape the sanatorium, but Piotr calls him over to an ancient library. Piotr brings out an ancient book and reveals a ritual about the Chosen One. He states that the Chosen One was born during an eclipse and had to be immediately killed using a dagger. If he isn't slain after birth, then the Chosen One will devour seven sinners and drink the blood of an innocent. As soon as the ritual is complete, the Chosen One will become a demon and will bring upon the end of the world. Piotr speculates that Merrick is the Chosen One and that the Prior and the rest of the monks are completing the ritual. It is revealed that Prior Andrzej and the monks are priests that worship Satan and are working on summoning the devil. While Merrick scans through the pages, he finds an image of the same appearance as the scar on his left chest. Despite that, he denies the tale out of disbelief and the two of them devise a plan to escape in the sanatorium. Piotr offers a plan and mentions a hidden passage that leads outside the monastery, inviting Merrick to escape with him. In an attempt to gain his trust, Piotr also shows Merrick the scars he had acquired after supposedly trying to escape from the sanatorium. In the end, Merrick trusts Pryor and lets him lead the way. He introduces Merrick to a small tunnel and the two of them crawl deep into a cave. Suddenly, they hear a noise from behind and soon later Merrick is cornered by two monks who immobilize him in the process. He turns his head toward Piotr, realizing that it was all a bait before the monks knock him unconscious. Merrick wakes up at the sight of the church monks surrounding him. He is again bound and tied to a wooden pillar while the prior and the church monks gather in their red cloaks. Prior Andrzej reveals to Merrick that he had intentionally brought him to the sanatorium and the few anonymous tips Merrick got actually came from him. The prior apologizes to Merrick for the deception, but he also clears out that everything they had done came with good intentions. Prior Andrzej and their brotherhood of church monks believe that God and the devil sit side by side with an understanding. He further explains to Merrick that it is not the devil, but the humans who are evil, and that in turn, they have deserved punishment for a long time. The church monks also believe that a gateway to hell exists in the nearby well, leading them to build the sanatorium in the said location. The entire brotherhood has waited for 800 years before Merrick, the Chosen One, came to existence. When the ritual is complete, the devil will emerge from the well and enter Merrick's body. Soon after, the church monks proceed to complete the ritual by acquiring the last requirement, which is the blood of an innocent. They bring over the woman who was previously exorcised, making her kneel before Merrick. Merrick stares down at the woman he has long been looking for, trying to stop the priest from killing her. The priest mercilessly slashes the throat of the woman and collects the gushing blood out of her. Then, they all sip the woman's blood from a bowl before disposing of her. Ultimately, the prior reaches the bowl onto Merrick's mouth and forces him to do the same while he whimpers. The prior leads another prayer as the church monks recite a chant to call upon the devil. But after reciting their chants and completing the ritual, nothing happens. Merrick cackles weakly while Prior Andrzej checks back to Piotr whether they have missed a step on the ritual. Piotr reviews the ancient book, but fails to find any more instructions left to do. The two continue to speculate and recall how they did the ritual. When they come to a realization that the ritual has failed, Piotr becomes upset and subtly blames the Prior. As a response to the rest of the church monks, Piotr admits there was a mistake on their part. He orders them to go back to their quarters and meet the next day like nothing happened. The members grow concerned with Merrick, thinking that the militia will come looking for him soon. Piotr faces Merrick and apologizes to him before he stabs him with a dagger. 
he stares at Merrick until he loses consciousness before the church monks untie him. They then drag Merrick towards the well and throw him inside. Later on, the prior drinks out his dissatisfaction at the failed ritual while smoking a cigarette. He goes through the night while drowning his frustration in liquor, failing to notice that the cross in his room has turned upside down. After some time, Piotr enters his room and finds him wasted. It looks as if he is helping the prior to settle on his bed. However, Piotr grabs on a pillow and pushes it against the prior's face, suffocating him. The prior chokes and lets out continuous muffled struggles, but Piotr holds the pillow firmly, killing him. By the following day, the church monks burn the disfigured bodies of the women when suddenly Piotr calls them to gather in Prior's room. He shows the church monks the dead body of the prior while pretending to mourn his passing. The responsibilities of the prior are now given to Piotr. Meanwhile, Merrick turns out alive as he awakens at the bottom of the well. He slowly gets up and looks around the well surrounded with bones before his body starts to shake violently. Inside the sanatorium, Piotr and the church monks recite a prayer for the soul of Prior Andrzej. In the midst of the prayer service, Piotr shudders as he loses control of his senses. All of a sudden, he drops the ancient book as he is unable to talk any longer or move at his own will. The church monks stare at Piotr in confusion while he continuously gags. He slowly rises into the air with his arms forced to be spread horizontally, mimicking the pose of the crucifix. Just then, Piotr screams in agony while his body dissipates into a massive group of buzzing flies. While the flies buzz, a demon known as the sabbatical goat emerges from behind the altar. It is later revealed that the entire ritual was not a failed attempt because they have successfully summoned the demon and the demon was able to enter the sanatorium. The faceless demon goat looks at the church monks and shrieks loudly, shocking them. They attempt to run out of the sanatorium, but the demon stuns them in place. The church monks all freeze there while the statue of Jesus on the altar slowly turns toward the demon. It looks back at the statue of Jesus and imitates the pose of the crucifix. At the same time, the church monks levitate on their spots and are forced to stand upside down following an inverted cross. Soon, every human being inside the sanatorium takes after the inverted cross. Outside the sanatorium, the dead flowers and trees slowly come alive. This implies that the dead would be brought back to life while the living would immediately come to die. In the end, the demon continues to empower its presence inside the sanatorium. Within a few minutes, the ceiling of the sanatorium breaks in half. The sky cracks open and is followed by a rumbling thunder signifying how evil has returned into the earth with a new world order.